Uh, yeah? Right, last time I came to the park, it was in howling snow. So amazing what a few uh, different days make. Anyway, right, this video is to explain the matrix structure and how to make it work. Okay? A matrix organisation, this is the simplified version of it, as I've got drawn here, is that normally, commonly, the common format is the vertical sections here are often the discipline based groups and then what runs across are projects. This means that uh, people working in an organisation will have a, a manager to report to in their discipline and a manager to report to on their projects. Yeah. The projects are multidisciplinary virtual teams. And often some matrix organisations, people work on three or four projects at the same time, so they can have a discipline manager and a manager for each project they're working on. Okay, as you imagine, that is quite a complicated process to work. Um, there are sound reasons for doing it this way, which is, I'm guessing, the subject of another video, because this one's about making this work. Right then. The success of the Matrix organisation, apart from having good managers in the discipline section, is the performance of these virtual multidisciplinary teams. Now, I've drawn another one of my dodgy drawings. There you go. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's a multidisciplinary virtual team. OK, now making these work is actually quite a challenge. And one of the facts when I've worked with all the organisations I've worked in, there is one fact that everyone seems to agree on. And that is that... I don't know if we can read that, that technology-based collaboration is less dynamic than face-to-face. -face. So in other words, face-to-face -face is more dynamic than technology-based interaction. So, back to our virtual team, we have a choice in how to make this team work. Choice one is to make sure that the team meet so that we introduce the dynamism back into the team. It's not going to be as dynamic as a face-to-face -face team, 100% face-to-face -face team, but it'll still operate similar. Of course, the consequences of taking that choice tends to be, it's expensive because people have to travel to meetings, but it also tends to incur delay as decisions are delayed until the next meeting, until the next meeting. Okay, but many people do get these types of teams working on the face-to-face -face structure. The other option, a virtual team, is actually the individual team members socialise differently. So they're socialising in a format that allows for the fact that it's less dynamic interaction. Now having spent years trying lots of different techniques, these are the two techniques that consistently work in my experience. The first one is that each team member has a personal outcome. The outcome being what is required to be delivered with not too much of the how in it. Okay? That's obviously, so the project plans from the team aren't lists of tasks, they're actually lists of personal outcomes which are then allocated to the individual. Right. The other thing that they need, to socialise differently, is a common way to make their own choices. So choice is critical. So by here I mean they, could, they need to also make choices the same way, using the same format, using the same method. Because then if team members then up here, all have personal outcomes, and they're all making personal choices about how they deliver their outcome in the same way, the interdependencies naturally emerge as they make their own choices. But to do that, they all need to be following the same format of choice making, the end of the outcomes. So you combine those two, you then get multidisciplinary virtual team operating without in a different way, but still performing, but you don't get uh, the delays in meetings, between the meetings. And actually we've done, we've done some examples where, where this type of virtual team, using these two techniques, has actually outperformed face -to pure 100% face-to-face -face teams. Okay? Um, so basically, to sum up, to make the matrix work, you have to be able to have high-performing multidisciplinary virtual teams, more face-to-face, -face, or socialise differently. 
I choose when I'm running matrix teams to do this one, socialise differently. And the, the school that I'm setting up will be taught this way. Okay, that's it. Hopefully that will make sense. And I'll see you in the park again soon. Hopefully with the sun out again. <laughs> Bye. I've just showed the video to a friend and uh, they pointed out that I missed something. That is to explain why this different way of socialising is better in a multidisciplinary virtual team. So here it is. Okay. What happens here is the team members, each team member makes their own personal choices around how they deliver their personal outcomes. What they then do is share that with each other's team members. Okay, because they're all making choices using the same methodology and they're sharing the choices with each other, they learn about the interdependencies of their personal outcomes as they deliver them. So what this does is it allows the team members to each function as an individual, if you like, each doing their own bit, making their own choices, without losing the collective benefit of working as a team. The team members get their socialising from the people they meet on a day-to-day -day basis in their various different locations. And if they don't, they can get together to do nothing else other than socialise as a team. Now this is very different to the more traditional face-to-face -face format where people get together to share progress and make collective choices. Yep, so here is face-to-face, -face, collective, so they have to share progress, share the details, work it out, make their own collective team decision. Socialising differently by personal choices, personal outcomes, each person makes their separate choices, shares them and learns the interdependencies between the two. So everyone makes choices without actually having to interact with each other other than share what they've done and then over time they adapt and learn how to make choices. Of course it only works if they're all using the same methodology for choice making. Okay, hopefully that makes sense uh, and I will see you in the park again sometime. Thanks a lot.